terrible people around the world commit disturbing, heinous crimes every day. Victims are often innocent people who suffer from these crimes, but sometimes the accused ends up suffering as well, even though they truly did nothing wrong. Here are 10 people who were wrongly convicted of horrible crimes. Number 10, Madison Hobley. After waking up to the sound of the fire alarm in 1987, Madison Hobley told his wife to get their son and get out of the building. He then left their apartment to try to get other tenants, including his wife's parents, out of the building. He was unsuccessful and then couldn't find his wife and son again in the fire. After the blaze was out and smoke had cleared, seven people had died. This unfortunately included Hobley's wife, son, and in-laws. Hobley was brutally questioned by police and arrested on seven counts of murder. During the trial, police were unable to provide any written or recorded notes because they claimed they got wet and evidence was lost. They accused Hobley of throwing a gas can down the hall and started the fire. However, the gas can in question had been found in a cabinet in a locked apartment, and police hid evidence that the fingerprints found on the can didn't even belong to Hobley. Even with no substantial evidence, Hobley was convicted and spent 13 years on death row waiting to be executed for a crime he didn't commit. But fortunately, the governor pardoned Hobley along with nine other death row inmates who had been falsely accused. In 2003, he was finally able to return home. Number 9. James Woodard In 1981, James Woodard's girlfriend, Beverly Ann Jones, was raped and murdered and found near a river in Texas. Woodard was accused of being the last person seen with her, but court records showed that there were two other men with her. However, that information was never shared with the defense attorneys and James was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. DNA testing became available in 2004, and Woodard requested testing but was denied and told that there was nothing to test. For years, he repeatedly asked and DNA was finally tested in 2007, and it was concluded that he did not commit the crimes. He was released in 2008, but was later arrested again in 2012 for possession of cocaine. He died in prison after experiencing seizures. Number 8. David Cam On September 28, 2000, David Cam called the police and reported finding the bodies of his wife Kim and their two children, 7-year-old Brad and 5-year-old Jill, shot to death in their garage. He said he was playing basketball at a church and came home around 9pm and found Kim on the floor and the kids still in the car. On October 1st, Cam was charged with three counts of murder based on the analysis of a shirt he was wearing. A forensic analyst said the blood spatter on his shirt was consistent with the spatter made by shooting someone. At the trial, the prosecution contended that his motive was $750,000 in life insurance money. In 2002, he was sentenced to 195 years in prison. In 2004, a new trial was ordered. A sweatshirt found under Brad in the car contained DNA that did not match Cam, but matched a man named Charles Boney. A palm print on the car also matched Boney, and he claimed that he'd come to the home to sell Cam a gun and was outside of the garage when he shot them. Boney was tried separately and sentenced to 225 years in prison. Cam was later convicted of molesting his five-year-old daughter and was sentenced to life in prison in 2006, even though there was no evidence of him doing so. New evidence was found in 2013. Kim's DNA was found on the sweatshirt and Boney's DNA was found under her nails, suggesting that she struggled with him. This ultimately led to Cam being released later that year. Number 7. Clarence Elkins in 1998, Clarence Elkins, 58-year-old mother-in-law, Judith Johnson, was beaten, raped, and killed in her home, and her six-year-old granddaughter, Brooke Sutton, was beaten and raped. Sutton called a neighbor and left a message saying, somebody killed my grandmother. She went to another neighbor's house and was taken home. When the police interrogated her, she told them the man looked like her uncle, Clarence Elkins. Based on her identification, Elkins was convicted of rape and murder and was sentenced to life in prison, even though there was no physical evidence of him committing the crimes. Elkins' wife, Melinda, never doubted his innocence and hired a private investigator to reinvestigate the crime. In 2002, Sutton changed his story, remembering that the man had brown eyes, while Elkins has blue eyes. In 2004, Melinda obtained DNA tests on traces of biological matter from Johnson. The results excluded Elkins. In 2005, Melinda looked into the neighbor whose husband, Earl Mann, was a violent criminal and raped three girls under 10 years old. His DNA was a perfect match to that found on Johnson, but it wasn't until 2007 that Mann was indicted for the crimes and was sentenced to life in prison while Elkins was finally released. Number 6. Thomas Hainsworth Between January 3rd and February 1st of 1984, five women were sexually assaulted in or around Richmond, Virginia. 
Each case was so similar it was concluded one man was behind them. 18-year-old Thomas Hainsworth was arrested on February 5th after one of the victims saw him near a grocery store and identified him as her attacker. The four other victims also selected his photo when shown in a lineup. He was tried on four of the crimes at separate trials and the fifth case was dismissed. He was sentenced to a total of 74 years in prison. After he was in prison, however, the rapes continued and at least 10 women reported being attacked. Leon Davis was later arrested for those attacks. In 2009, DNA testing excluded Hainsworth from one of the attacks he was accused of. Lack of any physical evidence helped to exclude him from the other charges, along with him passing two polygraph tests. He was then released from prison in 2011. Number 5. Debbie Loveless and John Harvey Miller in 1989, Debbie Loveless and her husband, John Harvey Miller, called for paramedics to their home in Texas. Their four-year-old daughter, April, was lying on the kitchen floor wrapped in blankets. She was covered in wounds, and Loveless and Miller said she'd been attacked by wild dogs. She later died during surgery. The only evidence of a dog attack were a few scraps of bloody clothing found by the family's barn. The medical examiner conducted an autopsy and concluded that the wounds were caused by a knife and a curling iron, not by dogs. In the home, police found a curling iron in the hamper and a knife Miller received as a gift. They were later arrested for the murder of their young child and sentenced to life in prison. In 1992, the couple's lawyers received photos from the autopsy that had not been released before. In one photo, a paw print could clearly be seen on Abel's back. Several medical experts then reviewed the material and all concluded she was a victim of a dog attack. DNA testing also revealed that there was canine saliva on the child's clothing. Loveless and Miller were released from prison in 1993. Number 4. Michael Anthony Green In 1983, a woman was abducted from a payphone by three men who took her to a remote location and raped her in a car. The police found the car as the rapists fled on foot and were unable to catch them. They saw Michael Anthony Green with another man as they searched the area, but the victim didn't identify either of them as her rapists. A week later, Green was part of a police chase that ended with him crashing the car that he stole. He was put into a lineup and the rape victim then identified him as one of her rapists, even though she originally said he wasn't. He was then convicted and sentenced to 75 years in prison. In 2008, 25 years later, clothing from the victim was sent for DNA testing and the results excluded Green. He was released in 2010 and all charges were dropped later that year. Number 3. Stephen Truscott in 1959, 14-year-old Stephen Truscott was seen riding his bike with his classmate, 12-year-old Lynn Harper. Two days later, Harper's remains were found in a wooded area. Truscott immediately became a suspect and was questioned by police. He told them he was giving her a ride to a highway intersection. Police found this to be deceptive and arrested him for the murder. Truscott's trial took 15 days. The case against him was based on the belief that Harper was cautious and would not hitchhike, and that the police found inconsistencies in Truscott's statements. They believed he sexually assaulted her, strangled her with her shirt, and partially covered her body in an attempt to cover the remains. Stephen was found guilty on September 30, 1959, and he was sentenced to the death penalty. A year later, it was changed to life in prison with a 10-year parole eligibility. He was paroled in 1969 and remained quiet and low for almost 30 years. When new evidence came into light, Truscott received a retrial in 2006 and was acquitted a year later. He was awarded $6.5 million in compensation, which he used to launch the Truscott Initiative in Justice Studies at the University of Guelph. Number 2. Daryl Hunt In 1984, Daryl Hunt was wrongfully convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the rape and murder of Deborah Sykes. The only evidence came from a witness who saw Hunt with Sykes before the crime. The victim was white, Hunt was black, and the judge was said to be racist. Unfortunately, this played a big part in Hunt's conviction. In 1989, his conviction was overturned due to the witness recanting their statement. The prosecutors offered Hunt a plea deal. If he pled guilty to the murder and accepted the five years he already served, he would be freed. But Hunt refused to admit to a crime he did not commit and was sentenced to life in prison. In 1994, scientific advances led to the defense obtaining DNA evidence. Testing revealed that the rapist's DNA did not match Hunt's. In 2003, further testing led to the arrest of Willard E. Brown, who committed a similar rape and also the rape and murder of Sykes. Hunt was released in 2004, but sadly took his own life in March of 2016. Finally at number 1, we have Thomas Kennedy. Being falsely accused of rape can ruin your life and reputation, but I imagine being accused of rape by your own child makes everything even more painful. That's what happened to Thomas Kennedy in 2001. 
His daughter Cassandra accused her father of raping her multiple times in their home. She was examined at a medical clinic where doctors found trauma to her genitals. In 2002, the case went to trial and Cassandra repeated her allegations, resulting in Kennedy being sentenced to 15 years in prison. In 2012, Cassandra came forward and told authorities the accusations were false. The trauma doctors found had been caused by Cassandra being sexually active at a very early age. Her idea to accuse her father came when a friend's stepfather went to prison for being a child predator. She told police she wanted to make her father go away because he'd been drinking and smoking marijuana. Kennedy was released and paid a large amount of money for his 3,242 days in prison and attorney fees. It's unfortunate that the people on this list had to suffer for crimes they didn't commit, but we're glad that in most of these cases, appropriate justice was served. Please subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time on The List of It.